What's That Small Guilt That Haunts You, Part 5. Chill out and dive into the story. If you enjoy our vibe, don't forget to subscribe and share Thread Tonic with your friends. Account 1. I had a dog from age 7 until 18. She was the sweetest, most loving dog anyone could ever ask for. She had always been a wonderful companion. When I was 18, I started dating someone. It was a really messed up relationship. The guy was 36, but that's a story for another time. Anyway, my mental state was not the best at that time, to say the least. This guy demanded my attention constantly. I recall an occasion a couple of months into our relationship when I took a nap for about two hours and woke up with 40-something texts from him and about 15 phone calls, all progressively getting crazier with him freaking out about where I was, what I was doing, who I was with, etc. That kind of situation. Anyway, I was at home one night in my room. My dad had a couple of business associates staying with us. As far as I know, they were all on the porch outside drinking beer and enjoying themselves. I don't remember if someone came and got me, or if I went to the kitchen for a drink, who knows. All I recall is that I found my dad sobbing on the floor and holding our dog who was howling in pain. We loaded her into my dad's truck, leaving his very uncomfortable and confused business associates at our house and rushed to the vet's office. We had to wait about 15 minutes for the vet to arrive. This was around 10 p.m. We lived in a small town, and all the while my dad was sobbing and my poor dog was howling. I was totally disengaged, texting my boyfriend so that he would not freak out about why I wasn't responding to him. I had told him what was up, but he wouldn't leave me alone so that I could attend to my dad and dog. I should have just told him to leave me alone or ignored his texts. But I was young and very stupid and didn't want to deal with his inevitable freakout if I stopped talking to him. My dog was euthanized that night. Her kidneys had failed beyond the point of repair. The fact that she was dead and that I was not there to comfort her and my dad in her final hours like I should have been didn't sink in for me for about a year. I still feel like total crap about that. I desperately wish I could get a do-over for that. Count two. In grade seven, a friend of mine had rescued an injured squirrel. He fed the squirrel acorns. I passed by an acorn nut tree on the way to school, and I promised him I would bring him some acorns. I never brought him acorns. It's been seven years. I still think about it. Account three. My parents had gotten divorced and I was living with my mom. Times were extremely tough. I was really, really verbally abusive, especially for a seven-year-old. I would yell things like, I hate you, leave me at dad's, you piece of crap. I hate you. I always felt bad for her and couldn't understand why I felt the need to do these things, but it almost felt uncontrollable when I got these instances of rage. I pushed her once and she smacked me. It was not a real smack, more like she shoved my face away as I was trying to push her. It didn't hurt at all, not in the least bit. At the time, I was getting regular, really bad nosebleeds, sometimes just from sniffing too hard. My mom knew this, but when my nose started bleeding, she just looked at me in shock and walked to a chair and sat down. I walked away content with myself for showing her, but the next four hours when I came out, she was sitting in the same chair crying. I didn't say a word to her, and she enrolled us in therapy the next week and talked to the counselor privately. I'm sure blaming herself for my abuse, while the counselor would say things like, I just can't see how such a sweet girl with such sweet blue eyes could ever raise her voice to me. I still feel sick over that. 4. When I was a kid, I asked my mom if someone dialed 911 from a payphone, would they still need to pay? She didn't know, and no other adult that I asked afterwards knew either. A few days later, we were sorting through donated clothes for charity, so I picked up a payphone to call 911. It rang, someone answered, and I immediately hung up. Fifteen minutes later, a cop shows up and discovered that I called it, someone saw me on the phone. I explained to the cop that I wanted to test to make sure it worked if I ever needed to call 911 for real. The cop proceeded to scold me, and I felt guilty as heck. For years, I was unable to watch Rescue 911, an old show just like Cops, because it reminded me of my actions, and the feeling of guilt was too overwhelming for me. I was around 10 or so at the time. Account 5. It was Christmas 1991, and I was 10. My single mom bought me a cat as my present that year, my first pet. We were having Christmas at our house, 
and my mom was running around the kitchen cooking dinner and trying to put on a really beautiful, memorable meal. I opened a can of wet cat food over the sink and drained it, mistakenly into the pot of potatoes that were waiting to be mashed. I was terrified to let my mom down so everyone had cat food juice in their potatoes. I still think about it and feel awful I did that. Account 6. My mother's boyfriend's dog was slowly dying. It wasn't my place to tell him differently. Anyways, I never really liked the dog all that much as I had to get rid of my childhood dog for his. But over the years, he grew on me more than the others in the house. During his last few months, I was the only one home during the days. It got so bad with the dog that I had to carry him in and out of the house to take a shit, if you could call it that. Also, he wasn't eating at all. One day I'm upstairs playing my video games and hear him whimper. Same as always, I told myself. I'll just finish up this game and go check on him. I missed it. I missed him. He died alone and in pain, holding on for every last second just to see his best bud come through the door one last time. He passed away on the landing in front of the door, waiting. Just put the game down. Account 7. About 10 years ago, I got my first and only tattoo, an 8-bit bat from The Legend of Zelda. The guy that worked on me looked like a straight-up cholo badass, tons of tattoos everywhere, including a few teardrops on his face, slick black hair, tons of rings, etc., and I looked like the kind of kid that would get a Nintendo tattoo. Anyways, we chatted it up while he worked, and I learned that he used to be a gangbanger and he had served time in prison, but he had since gotten married and cleaned up his act, and now has two kids that he cares about a whole lot. A total family man. It was a cool experience, but in my naivety, I didn't realize that you had to tip your tattoo artist. I didn't tip him. I did it again when I went back a few weeks later for a touch-up. Double no tip. I work for tips now, and I know how infuriating being stiffed feels. I've always wanted to track him down and make good, but the tattoo shop is an hour's drive away, and I don't even know if he still works there. God, the crushing not really guilt. Count eight. When I was 10, my two-year-old cousin came to stay at my house. During his stay, he kept stealing my toys, so I got really angry. Then one day, he stole a toy gun from me, so I decided to chase him. Unfortunately, we were upstairs, so he went straight for the stairs and tripped on the first step. He went all the way down and banged his head on the radiator. Sometimes I just remember that day and think that it was all my fault. I could have prevented this. Or what if he had died? Account 9. When I was probably 10 or so, I was visiting my grandmother back in the homeland. She had a pet rooster who was very cute but very afraid of people. While my grandma talked to my dad and uncle, I chased this rooster around trying to catch it. I was told to stop, but I didn't. I loved animals and wanted to play with it. The rooster evaded me by running into a gap in the side of my grandma's well and fell in and drowned. They used the bucket to pull him out. My grandma was crushed because he was her only source of happiness and company. I totally ruined her life at that point. A year later, she was in a nursing home, and two years later, she died. I feel that if I hadn't done what I did, she would have lived longer. Pets help increase our lifespan, and I just shortened it. She was lonely and depressed, and it was my fault. Pen. There was this kid back in eighth grade who was always very jubilant and energetic. He would always have a smile on his face and would never hesitate to tell one of his many made-up jokes albeit many of them were sincerely terrible. He was the guy who would always be by your side and spit jokes, often to the point where they became annoying and a bit harassing. So one day at lunchtime, my friends and I were roaming the playground looking to cause some mischief. Just then, let's call him Gary. Gary shows up. Now we were a tight-knit group, and Gary wasn't really that close to us. To put it shortly, our personalities didn't mesh. But we didn't want to hurt his feelings and tell him to go away, so he hung out with us in school. Needless to say, our hopes of causing mischief sank down the toilet, and an unspoken buzzkill vibe was felt among us who were closely bonded in the group. Hey, you guys, how did King Kong kill himself? How, Gary? He got knives on his hands and... Gary banged on his chest and roared like a gorilla. Now, normally, I would have feigned a giggle, but this was the 1,000th time I'd heard Gary tell that joke. Seeing no response from the group, and with a big, stupid smile on his face, Gary initiated another joke. What did the... I interrupted him. Gary, I have to be honest with you. Your jokes aren't funny, and you need to give us some space. You're all up in our business, and you also have bad breath. Needless to say, we didn't see him hang out with us much after that. 
I feel guilty because when he went to high school, it's like he became a completely different person. Always wearing a stone-cold face, silent, shy. Just the exact opposite of how he used to be. I'm still friends with the guy... Count 11. I broke a girl's heart because I had crippling trust issues. We had dated for a year prior, and I moved to go to a cosmetology school that would have only lasted a year. So now we were doing long distance. The distance got the better of us. She dealt with it better than I did. I treated her pretty badly because I was scared. It's hard to explain, but I ended up forcing her out of my life myself in fear of losing her any other way. That girl loved me and was the only person who I could talk to and show emotion towards. I'm not very good at making friends. I have no social groups here, so I'm literally alone besides my mom and siblings. I ended up not being able to afford going to that school, and now I'm enlisted in the Marine Corps and don't have anyone besides my mom to write letters to. I feel so bad because not only did I hurt myself, I probably gave her my same trust issues. She won't talk to me anymore, but she was always very impressionable with the way I acted and seemed to mimic me. I was also her first boyfriend and I completely destroyed her. Account 12. Last year I was pregnant without knowing it and drank quite a bit of alcohol. Two months into the pregnancy, I had a miscarriage. My SO tells me it isn't my fault that these things happen, but I can't help but think if I hadn't had the alcohol that I had, would we have had another child? Another factor into the miscarriage could have been my SO's positive blood type and my negative one. Again, my fault. If I had taken a pregnancy test when I thought my cycle had come around but it was very light, I would have gone to the doctor to get the shot I needed, but I was irresponsible and because of it, I had a miscarriage. I still feel guilty about it over a year later, Account 13. When I was in middle school, I hated my math teacher, John. He told a few friends and me that he was allergic to cinnamon. Two days later, I bought some cinnamon Tic Tacs and offered him some in class. He took them, thinking they were the spicy ones. He ended up leaving for a week. He was also the same teacher whose coffee I'd spit in, who I'd call gay, play techno music in class, and who I made a disrespectful MySpace for. Fast forward two years later, he became my cross-country coach. Bought me food every day, bought me an iPod, and got me in the best shape of my life. He left the school a year after because he thought the school was going to hell. To this day, I still feel bad for giving him hell. Sorry, Mr. Patterson. Account 14. When I was probably around 8 or 9 years old, I went to a friend's birthday party at this place called Monkey Biz. It's a gross crossover between bounce houses and an arcade. I was sort of an oddball at the time and was excluded from the group of kids playing and whatnot. I wanted to join in, but they kept shooing me away, and I was on the verge of tears. I went to the arcade area to play by myself, still about to cry. I was collecting tickets from a game when a kid I'd never seen before came over and offered me his tickets. I was still angry and on edge, so I lashed out at him, yelling that I didn't want his stupid tickets. He dropped the tickets and ran away crying. Then I realized he just wanted to be friends and talk, and I totally shut him down. I cried the whole rest of the time. I still feel horrible to this very day. Account 15. Quite some years ago, I got this really awesome gift for Christmas. It was a huge Lego Harry Potter train, I believe, that you could, duh, build yourself. It was a really cool gift, but it wasn't what I had asked wanted. Not sure if I said specifically what I wanted. I made a huge deal out of it and cried a little. My parents returned the thing and got me the gift I wanted instead. Looking back at it, I was pretty stupid. Looking back, I was such a fucking spoiled dickish douchebag. To this day, I cannot forgive myself for it. I'm 16. There was a girl I went to high school with, and it seemed like she had her own gravity for drama. Every day, she was crying over one thing or another. Most of the time, it was drama over boys or friends, along with other stuff like her health, family troubles, and her grades, which influenced everything, too. I genuinely felt bad for her and tried to console her through some of it, but I found it exhausting to spend so much effort listening and cheering her up when she didn't actually reciprocate as a friend for me at all, and still hung out with the same people who caused drama. One day at lunch, she had been crying, and her mom came to pick her up from the cafeteria. Her mom doted over her a lot, buying things for her, and letting her stay home when she didn't feel like going to school. I said something to a friend like, Oh, Sandara's been crying again. Wonder what it is this time. Someone said, Her dad died in a car crash over the weekend. And I just felt horrible. 
I still do whenever I think about it. Account 17. Five years ago, I watched my grandfather for 45 minutes as he took his last moments of life when his life support was removed. I had not talked to him in four years before that point. To this day, I still feel the pain in my soul from that last gasp of air. Before, I was a 25-year-old boy living with his mother, still sleeping in his childhood bed. All childhood toys had been destroyed by a fire, and the family house is gone due to foreclosure and was torn down. But there is some good. I now have a college degree and a wife who loves me, and we are planning a family. I learned that you must love everything as though it is the last time you see it because it can be. One last thing I learned from all of this. Be careful what you wish for. You may get it. I asked for what regret feels like. Now I bear this pain of loss forever. I hope you don't make my mistake. Account 18. This one makes me feel like shit. My mom and I used to get into fights all the time because she had a drinking problem. The night she was shot in the head, she had called me drunk as usual. I got really angry and yelled at her, telling her not to call me again while drunk. I basically bashed her drinking and told her I was tired of dealing with it. I ended up getting a phone call from her house an hour before she died, Account but I deleted 50. the voicemail before listening to it. The last thing I said to my mom was horrible, and I'm going to have to live with that for the rest of my life. Two detectives showed up at my job that night to tell me my stepdad had shot her and himself. 